Hi everybody, it's Miss Beck, and today you are joining me from lesson 1-12, Describing Shapes. Before we start the lesson, we are going to remember that we had a survey yesterday, and a survey is when we ask a question expecting an answer from a group of people. So hopefully you have sent your survey answer in to your teacher, and we collected the survey answers yesterday to the question, did you play outside this weekend? Um, each class will have a different answer set. So I'm just gonna go over a sample one really quick for some important vocabulary words. Okay, so I'm gonna make up some answers. Did you go outside this weekend? I'm gonna say we surveyed six people. So it's important to know how many people we surveyed. So Bob went outside and Joe went outside and Fred went outside and Sally went outside. So that's four people. Now we had two people that did not go outside. James and Natalie did not go outside. So when we collected this pretend survey data, we said that we had four people that went outside and how many people went, didn't go outside? How many people stayed inside? Two. So let's record those numbers. Four people played outside and two people did not play outside. So that's our data or data. So we have six data points. Now, when we look at our data, we can ask some questions, and these are some questions your teacher or your grown up will ask you regarding our survey. And if you're online, I will go ahead and send you a picture of that as soon as we have all of our information compiled. So the first question I'd like to ask you about this particular survey is which answer choice had more, yes or no? That's right, yes, because four is more than two. Great job. Now, which answer choice had less? Yes or no? No, no only had two. Another word for less is fewer. Two is fewer than four. How many people were surveyed? How many people did we ask the question? One, we can count them. Two, three, four, five, six. And when we look at the two numbers at the bottom, that should add up. So that was a fun survey, wasn't it? I thought it was pretty good. Let me make sure of anything else. Ooh, let's do a tally. Yes and no, that'll be really great. We'll add some more to this as we go. So do you remember how many people said yes? That's Miss Beck's dog barking. Her name is Sarah and she loves to bark. Excuse me, but I'll be right back. Sarah Bear. Okay, I'm back. So how many people said yes? Four. Okay, let's make four tally marks. One, two, three, four. Four people said yes. How many people said no? Two. One, two. Tally marks is a good way to keep track of information. Um, especially if you're keeping score. And if you're playing a game and you want to know what the score is and you're kind of might forget, you can take down tally marks and see. Sometimes when we do score in class, we might be boys versus girls and we can see which team earns the most tally marks. And so we can see very clearly by looking here that four is more than two. More people went outside than did not go outside. It was a lovely weekend. 
and it is beginning to feel a lot like the season of oh that's right fall of the year let's let back loves fall because the leaves start to fall and change colors the weather starts to get colder i love fall fall is so much fun okay so today our number is the number eight that's the number that comes after seven the number eight all right, I'm going to write an eight on my paper. Make an S and don't be late. Back around, you'll have an eight. There's a nice number eight. All right, hands in the air. Paper. Make an S and don't be late. Back around, you'll have an eight. One more time. Make an S and don't be late. Back around, you'll have an eight. Sometimes people get confused on an eight and they like to draw it like two balls on top of each other. And that is fine with me if that's the way you make a nice number eight. Okay, boys and girls. Now let's do one more, one last tally marks in our number one. So what was our number? Eight. So let's explore eight. Where did Miss Bex pop? Mr. Bates, did you steal my popsicle stick? You didn't. You weren't making some popsicles. Sarah was on my video um, marking. Okay, so we have eight. Let's see. We're going to get eight popsicle sticks. Ready? Now, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's start it out a little bit different. So we have eight popsicle sticks. And do you remember how we showed one last? That's right, we took one away. Take it away. Now let's see how many we have. Count. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven was our number from yesterday. Hmm. Looks like our numbers are going in order. One less than eight is seven. Doo -doo -doo. All right, we're going to start with eight. Eight is great. Eight popsicle sticks. All right, start with eight. Eight is great. Heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now to do more, we've got to get one more. Where can I find one more popsicle stick? I think my good assistant, Mr. Beck, needs to bring me a popsicle stick. It's right there. You can't bring it to me, Mr. Beck. <laughs> Thank you. Where's Mr. Beck can? You got to say hello to the boys and girls. <laughs> okay, so he gave me one more. Let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more than eight is nine. Nine is nine. Now, I'm gonna see if you can get out your math journal and I want for you to show your grown up nine tally marks. I'm gonna go ahead and write mine on my paper and then you can check your answer. Draw nine tally marks. Okay, I'm waiting. Okay, I've got four. Oh yeah, when I get four, then I have to do that diagonal line. Nine. Did you get nine? If you didn't, you can pause Miss Beck. That's fine. Let's check your answer. Nine. 
So I have a group of five here. And remember to do my five. I did that diagonal line. Six, seven, eight, nine. Thumbs up. Now say the word nine. Nine. We don't want to say the word nine. We want to say the word eight. Because eight was our number. Everybody say eight. Eight. And eight is a tricky word to snap. Smell, spell, because it sounds like it starts with an A, but it doesn't. Inspect and spell the word eight. And I want you to spell it with me. Ready? E I G H T. What does that spell? Eight. Now let's see how many letters are in the word eight. One, two, three, four, five. Five. I think there was five letters in another one we did yesterday. There were five letters in the number seven. Remember? One, two, three, four, five. That's so cool. Boys and girls, eight is great. Now, let's move on to our main lesson for today. Our main lesson for today is describing shapes. In your math manipulatives kit, I would like for you to get out the shapes. The shapes I would like you to have are a hexagon. I guess that has two hexagons. A tan rhombus. A blue rhombus. A an orange square, one of our counters for a circle, and a trap, trap, trapezoid. Where is my, oh, I got a triangle, a green triangle. We also need a green triangle. After you get those out, go ahead and close your box. So let's put our box on the floor. That'll be a good way to do it. That way our hands are not in our boxes. Now I'm gonna use my lid as a tray and put all my shapes on the tray. Now, Miss Beth told you that we were gonna be describing shapes. Do you all know what the word describe means? The word describe means to tell about something. And when we describe something in math, we have to use some math words. Well, you might be saying, Miss Beth, what are some math words? Well, we're going to talk about that today. So let's start by looking at a shape. And we're going to look at the shape. And the first thing we want to know when we look at the shape is what kind of shape it is. Okay? So let's start with an easy one. What is the name of this shape? It's a triangle. Okay, so when we're doing a shape, one of the things we want to talk about is the number of sides, okay? So how many sides does a triangle have? Let's count them. One, two, three. Count them again and touch them, ready? One, two, three. So you wanna always talk about their sides. You also wanna talk about their points. Point is where the lines come together. One, two, three. Three sides and three points. Um, you might want to describe if your shape is pointy, if your shape is curvy, if your shape is wide, if your shape is open, or if your shape is closed. Now, I bet you're wondering, like, what is a open shape and what is a closed shape? Well, a triangle is a closed shape. And the reason it's closed is because all of the lines come together. So if you got inside of this triangle, you could not get out. It's closed. Think of closing the door. You cannot open it. So if you got inside of this triangle, you could not get back out. All the lines are closed. Whereas with an open shape, you can get in and out. So this curvy shape is an open shape. I can come in and I can get out. Is 
So now when we describe, we are going to think also of what the shape could remind us of. We're gonna think of something we see maybe in our classroom or in our home that looks like that shape. And in just a minute, we're gonna compare our shape with a partner. So you're gonna have a shape and in class, a friend's gonna have a shape. Um, at home, you're gonna have a shape and your grown-up's gonna have a shape, okay? So let's continue with this triangle real quick since we were doing so great with the triangle. So it had three lines, three sides, and three points. All those are three, okay? It was a closed shape. It's pointy. What does this triangle look like? It could look like the top of a house, couldn't it? What else could it look like? Tell your grown up what it looks like. Just the triangle. Now, look around your classroom or your house and see if you see something that is shaped like a triangle. Bring it back so your grown up can see it. Is there anything in here shaped like a triangle? There's nothing in here shaped like a triangle? I think my stuff is probably too. Can you get it? Mm -hmm. You're such a dentist. You know what? You know what's over here? It would get that shape. This is not mine. I'll show you something really sweet. I hope Mr. Beck doesn't break my birdhouse. This is a special birdhouse. Thank you. This bird house was from the very, very first class that Ms. Beck ever had. And it has a triangle. Thank you, Mr. Beck. And then I saw this on the refrigerator when I came in, um, when I walked by. That was Madison's shape. She did pretty good. Looks a little scribbly, but she's only three. And there's a triangle right there on her shapes. A blue triangle. So you found something that's a triangle, hopefully. Now, let's do two different shapes and let's describe those two, two different shapes. So let's switch it up. No more triangles. I am going to have a square. I need, I need a partner real quick. Please, Mr. Beck, please. I'm just going to give you a shape and you just have to describe it. You have to come over here so the friends can see. All right. All right, Mr. Beck. Hello. Mr. Beck makes lots of noises and sounds and impersonations. So if he starts to do something funny, do not laugh. Okay. So you get whatever shape you want, Mr. Beck. What shape does he have? Mr. Beck, you want to tell him what shape that is? This is a trapezoid. Okay, so Miss Beck has a square and Mr. Beck has a trapezoid. Let's compare these shapes. Okay, my square has four points. Mr. Beck? My trapezoid has five sides. How many points does it have? One, two, three, four. My square has four sides. Once again, my trapezoid has five sides. Very good. My square is a closed shape. Do -do -do. My trapezoid is also a closed shape. My square is pointy. My trapezoid is pointy. My square looks like the bottom part of a house. My trapezoid looks like the top part of a house. What kind of house is that? Oh, like this? 
a fancy house. Ooh. Um, I didn't have another. Oh, I have another trapezoid. Do you know what happens when you put two trapezoids together? What do you get? A hexagon. That's okay. right. Yeah. Okay. There's your. Um. Anything else you want to say about your trapezoid? It is. Now, Mr. Beck has trouble seeing colors, but I believe this is red. It is red. And my square is... Um, whose shape is bigger, mine or yours? Oh, mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his is bigger and mine is smaller. Well, that's not fair. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. And while I have it in my mind, we were putting those two shapes together. Watch and see what happens when I put these two squares together. What does it make? A rectangle. Oh, so smart. Okay, boys and girls, everybody say thank you to Mr. Beck. He was a reluctant participant, but he bye did bye. a great job. Goodbye. See you later. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for stopping in for Miss Beck's math lesson. And we were graced by the presence of Mr. Beck and Sarah, although Sarah was barking. That was not very lovely. Um, today, we described the shapes. We told what was alike about the shapes, and we told what was different about the shapes. We used words like pointy. We didn't have anything round, but we could have, right? Circles are round. Um, we said corners. We said lines. We said sides. We said points. We said bigger, we said smaller, we said open, and we said closed. So we described those shapes really, really well. I hope you enjoyed our lesson, and until next time, I will see ya. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. See you later. See you later. See you later. It's time to say goodbye.